Hell and back. I did a video for you the other day, but it didn't come out. So I'll just explain this this way. Um, you one of my number one viewers because you watch my shit and you comment on every video you see, and I trust your uh, judgment. What I was trying to say in that video, not to belittle Mexican people or degrade Mexican people, was to use a stereotype and just spread it out of proportion. Because if Mexican people act like black people did on YouTube, you probably wouldn't even be on YouTube. You probably would not be able to sit there and watch other Hispanic people or Mexican people or Latinos act like stupid ass imbecilic niggas. I said it. So when I made the analogy, I think it was when I said, um, yeah, I'm tired of my woman uh, trying to be cool and take care of everything in the neighborhood. I just wish she was just, you know, or, you know, something I said, I don't know. And then um, the stereotypes I mentioned that, you know, some other women have told me about how Mexican men want their women fat so nobody wants them so they can go fuck skinny girls. Some shit is... Listen, I'm going to repeat shit I heard from women. So when women say some shit, of course, they're going to be angry at the man they're saying it about. Therefore, that's why it sounds so foul. But um, other than that, man, out of all the people I would hate to offend is you. Because I know you pay attention to what I say. And you know I didn't mean nothing by it. But I remember one time I said something about uh, Mexican people when I first got on the YouTube. And a lot of people don't understand I work for a Mexican company. I work for Mexican people. And um, when I said an invasion is an invasion, I was just repeating something that an old Mexican guy had told me. And he told me he's tired of seeing these young guys fuck it up because of the way he laid it down. And I'm like, damn, you sound like an old black dude the way he said, I'm tired of them fucking it up because of the way I laid it down. I'm like, damn. But his voice is like, he's old, he's like, I'm tired of them fucking it up because of the way I laid it down. And he, he tell the truth because they came here with nothing. Not a goddamn thing. And now the motherfuckers own like five, six restaurants and shit, two, three catering companies and shit. They popping the most. And it was sad to see an old Mexican guy talk shit about illegals because the first time I heard him say something I'm like he must be joking me because I thought and just like everybody else assumes that every black person is going to back up every black person regardless of what a black person does this man does not want illegals fucking up his way of life and he flat out told me I'm tired of seeing this and it's like saying what but I'm used to seeing this shit jumping off and he was telling me that since he owns his house and whatever, he went to to get some help. This is a Mexican man, been in this country over 50 years. He went to go get help. They might own restaurants and shit, but healthcare is expensive. And you have a corporation and a family and shit, you can't just take. Even though he got insurance and shit, he was trying to find him some help because even though you might have some change in the bank. You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. He tried to find himself some help. And his lawyer told him, since you own your house, you can't get no help. Since you own any stock in a restaurant, you can't get any help. So he says, I have to be homeless and have nothing to get help here in this country? And... The lawyer told him to take your house out of your name. Put it with your grandkids now. Take your name off of your bank accounts and then you can get some assistance. Because even though people in this country assume that these people have X and, that and, and Y amount of dollars, no matter what you have, no matter what you got, you always need some help to maintain what you got so you can keep what you have. And it was sad that this man has went through some shit, life-threatening spinal shit. His hands don't work like they used to. And he's been working in this country all his life. 
and he can't get any help come on and this is a Mexican guy you know what I'm saying and it's pretty fucked up how when you look at poor people in every race and you look at those who have and most of the Hispanic people I know with something I mean I know I know crooks I know thugs I know politicians of course I know restauranteurs business owners and civic leaders I know all these bankers I know all these different Hispanic influences on the community and each one of these entities mesh in other words it's trickled down in the Hispanic community even though I'm not gonna say his name I'm just gonna say even though Jorge didn't like what he saw in young Hispanics the gangs and all the bullshit we have around here and even the illegals even though the Hispanic money stays in Hispanic community what no I just had lunch you can't what I'm trying to say is this no matter what stereotype you can place on an Hispanic person, it doesn't matter. No matter what stereotype you place on a black person or a white person, it doesn't matter. It all depends on the people that you know and how many times you see. I suggest you stop it. It all depends on how many times. What? What, man? You got dog food over there? I'll pour A1 steak sauce on your dog food. Come on, man. Don't nobody else get it like that in America. So, put it like this. The Hispanic, the Hispanic community... The, the Hispanic... You better run. The Hispanic community reminds me of when I was growing up and the black community when we were unified. And at that point when... You keep on doing that, man. Keep on doing it. I will call Helen back over here to kick your little furry butt. Get away from me, doggy. So, um... There is still unity in the Hispanic community. And that's the unity that I used to see in the black community. When the black community was at its apex, I think, in the early 70s, mid-70s, when brothers have was coming into their own and shit, I see that is where the Hispanic community is right now. Over the last few years, I've noticed in my town they have been creating laws, and these laws are strictly based against the Hispanic people going out there and marching. Oh, in other words, you want to march for this and that, now you have to pay for it. They are trying to make these Hispanic people in my community protest. When they protest, they are trying to make them pay for it. In other words, if you plan on protesting on such and such street in downtown Santa Rosa, you have to come pay a $500 fee, period, so you can allow yourself to walk down a certain street in protest mode. I mean, they're trying to disable the Hispanic new movements. And I see through fear. A lot of people act like they're scared of Hispanics. And you hear the undertow through the little white community around here, how the Mexicans are taking their jobs and blah, blah, blah. And let me revert back to what Jorge was saying. Jorge was saying that you get people coming in here to this country and they fuck up the wages. And he was saying they fuck up the wages primarily because they don't know what to ask for when they get here. And other people, big industry and big company, mistreat his people for this. Therefore, they drive everybody's wages down and send money back. And when they send money back home, his business here in the town loses money because the people can't spend money in his business even though he's a Hispanic business owner. Most of their customers, and I repeat this, are whites. So other than that, I didn't mean to offend anybody Hispanic, Mexican, or whatever. 